Hello, and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. The supernatural can be a variety of things. Scary, inspirational, comforting, or confusing, to name a few. But real-world events or pranks that are mistaken for the supernatural can often be downright hilarious. Those are the stories we'll be exploring here tonight. Remember to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. for new tales of the paranormal, creepy humans, and sometimes comedic misunderstandings. And if you like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll never miss an invitation to the party. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared and laugh. Together, 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 together. This happened a few years back, when my best friend had just had her daughter and was living in her first apartment with, for lack of a better term, the baby daddy. I had flown in from several states away to come see her and the baby, and I knew her relationship with the baby daddy was on the rocks. He was in a constant crappy mood and was obsessed with smoking weed. Although he never smoked around my friend or the baby, he was always leaving home to go smoke in the neighborhood. My friend Ray was pretty angry about his behavior. Prior to my arrival, she had asked her mom to watch her daughter for the night because I was visiting. Now that we were alone, she asked for my help in playing a prank on her baby daddy. He was the type to get easily worked up and excitable when he's high. Plus, he's really into ghost stories. So I helped her devise a pretty good prank. Because there was no AC in the apartment and it was summer, there was a fan in the corner of the baby's room to keep it cool and help her sleep. Recently, Ray noticed that a leg on the fan had been coming unscrewed. And if she loosened it up just a bit more, it made a soft tapping sound somewhat consistently on the wooden floors. It wasn't terribly loud, but it was noticeable if the apartment was quiet. There was also a baby monitor in the room on the bedside table. We put a solo cup beside the monitor and lay it on its side, using double-sided tape to keep it from rolling off. Then we put a small sticky note inside, hanging down. Since the fan would oscillate, it would hit the cup every 30 seconds or so, causing the sticky note to flutter inside the cup. Over the cheap baby monitor, it sounded something like a long, strange intake of breath. So we loosened the screw on the fan, put the cup in place, and turned the baby monitor's volume low, and waited. Eventually, baby daddy came home and we all watched TV and talked. Ray kept her part of the monitor by her drink, and when she'd reach for her drink, she would slightly brush the volume switch so it slowly raised in volume until it was fully audible. Over the speaker, we heard a light tapping, and Baby Daddy turned his head looking for the source of the sound. After a few moments, we heard the sound of the air hitting the inside of the cup and making the sticky note flutter. It would have been legitimately creepy had I not been in on the gag. Baby Daddy stood up and said, What the F? And Ray, always so great at acting, got all wide-eyed and shrank back into the couch, looking terrified. She asked in a small, scared voice, What was that? Now, I'm not known for assuming that anything is spooky, so I played the part of the skeptic and said, Was that the AC? There is no AC, my friend said. So, Baby Daddy muted the TV and we could hear the tapping continuing on the monitor. He furrowed his brow at the sound and asked if the monitor was broken. Ray shook her head and insisted that it was working just fine during their daughter's nap that day. Again, 
we heard the alleged intake of breath over the monitor, and baby daddy flips out. He stomped into the kitchen and grabbed a pot from the kitchen cabinets as a weapon before making his way down the hallway towards the empty bedroom. Yeah, amazing defense strategy, I know. The baby's room was completely dark. Even the windows were covered by blackout curtains to keep the heat out. And baby daddy was frozen in place, staring into the room from a couple yards back. He never even fully approached the door, he was so scared. Ray stage whispered to him from the couch. The baby's at my mom's house tonight. You can go ahead in. At this, baby daddy shrugged, shook his head, dropped the pot on the table loudly as another alleged breath was heard through the monitor. He made an angry noise, grabbed his cigarettes off the coffee table, stomped to the back door, threw it open to go out and have a smoke on the balcony. Ray sprinted into the baby's room, threw out the cup, fixed the fan, and came back to the couch so we could look like we were innocently watching TV. Baby Daddy finished his cigarette and came back inside. He was angrily listing all the possibilities of what that noise could be as soon as his foot was through the door. Ray crossed her arms, looked at him and said, Thanks for leaving me and my friend here with the ghost. You'd better hope this doesn't come back when our daughter's home. I've heard him recount this story to quite a few people, and he claims that he heard, quote, a person breathing like they were deranged, and they were just tapping on the side of the crib for like 20 minutes straight. In no iteration of his retelling of the story did he ever actually go in the room or defend his home and girlfriend. And listeners always remark on that. Eventually they broke up and my friend and her daughter are now in a very happy family unit with her new husband. No word if baby daddy is still on the lookout for that ghost or whatever became of that kitchen pot. This is one of my top secrets. There was a time when one of my flatmates single-handedly sustained a weed dealer with his habit. He'd wake and bake, eat and bake, live and bake. The lot. He would often get very paranoid after smoking certain strains and soon began talking about how he thought our flat was haunted. Now that wasn't an issue for me. I was actually bummed that I never heard any of the sounds he claimed to hear or see the doors opening and closing, etc., because I loved the idea of having a ghost, even though it was clear to me that we didn't. Still, my flatmate was determined to believe that we had a poltergeist. One day a friend and I were hanging out in my bedroom next to the kitchen, and the flatmate in question was making those instant noodles that come with a lid. He left the kitchen for a moment to go get something, and my friend had a spur-of-the-moment inspiration. He sneaked into the kitchen, tore the lid off of the noodles, placed it on the counter next to the cup, then came back into my room, completely unnoticed. A few seconds later, my flatmate barged into my room, nearly shouting, have you gone into the kitchen? We both looked at him, poker-faced. He explained that the ghost had really done it this time and that he clearly remembered that the lid was on those noodles and there was no way for that lid to be removed on its own. Uh-huh. I played the skeptic and asked him a whole list of questions like, do you think it could have been the wind? Are you sure you aren't too high and just imagined it? Maybe you forgot. Are you positive that the lid was still on? And the whole time, he was completely freaking out. The upside to this prank is that the whole encounter prompted him to start going easy on the weed, 
and he's a lot less paranoid as a result. But he still recounts that story as one of his top paranormal experiences. One time I was at my mom's house getting a lawnmower out of the shed. My sister's window was open and there was a fan sitting on the windowsill. Since I'm six feet tall, as a prank, I reached up and turned the fan off. My sister got so freaked out, she started running around the house telling everybody that a ghost had turned off her fan. I never corrected her. And here's another story by this same poster, who seems to have very gullible sisters. My three sisters and I were sitting in the park around 11 p.m. Since the park bench only held three people, I had to sit on a rock behind them. I got the idea to pick up a stick and throw it into the bushes right next to the bench where they were sitting. They heard the sound of the stick hitting the ground and jumped. They looked around, scared. My sisters asked, did you do that? I said no because I wanted to see how far I could take this. I continued to periodically throw sticks and nobody ever figured out that it was me. When we were walking back to the car later, I picked up a relatively large branch and threw it at the ground as hard as I could. My sisters all screamed and jumped backwards because somehow they didn't see me throw it they started theorizing about what could have thrown all that stuff, and it was freaking them out so badly. That's when I tried to tell them that it was, in fact, me. But they didn't believe me. Here is one of my own stories, and you'll soon see, I too have a very gullible sister. I shared a room with my older sister growing up, and I always played pranks on her. One night, when I knew she was awake, but she thought I was asleep, I got out of bed as if in a trance, walked to the window, looked up at the moon and began, quote, speaking in tongues which consisted of me just saying gibberish. I then walked back to bed as if in a trance, got in and pretended to go back to sleep. To this day, she still believes I was actually in a trance and speaking in tongues to the moon. Once when I was cleaning off my dad's desk for him, I accidentally knocked over a candle and it shattered since it was in a glass container. My mom came running in the room and I told her, I just saw it fly off the desk all by itself. We must have a ghost. And she believed me. My older cousin used to smoke weed with his neighbor on occasion. One day, my cousin was out of his own weed, and he thought for sure that his neighbor wasn't at home. So he decided to break into the neighbor's house and steal his weed. The neighbor had really bad front doors. You could put your entire hand through the mail slot, and with a makeshift hook, grab the door lock and pull it open. My cousin went in, went upstairs to grab some of the weed, and it turns out his neighbor was actually still home. So my cousin panicked, and he ran out of the house, slamming the front door behind him. Later that day, his neighbor told him about how he had a paranormal experience and was convinced that a ghost opened, then slammed his front door. 
stoners. You gotta love them. I grew up in an old house with uneven wooden floors, cracked walls, and a very leaky roof, but I never had any paranormal incidents until one very frightening day. I was about 16 years old, and I was in the bedroom watching TV with my younger brother. It was just us home at the time. I asked him if he wanted to walk down the street with me to go to my friend Billy's house. He said yes, so I told him, okay, let me go get my shoes. I opened the bedroom door and turned the corner to walk through the dining room to get to the front hallway closet. When I did, I saw three of the dining room chairs around the table move slightly. Startled, I ran back into the bedroom with my heart beating a mile a minute. My brother asked, I thought we were going to Billy's. I said, yeah, yeah, in a bit. I finally conjured up the balls to leave the room again. And when I turned the corner, it happened again. As I stood there frozen, pants soiled, I heard meow. My outside cat had somehow gotten inside and was jumping across the chairs underneath the table where I couldn't see him. And because the floors were so uneven, the chairs rocked just slightly as his body hit them. He hadn't meowed the first time, so I didn't know it was him. I loved that cat, but at that moment, I wanted to punt him like a football. Here is another one of my own personal stories. I was babysitting for a family with three boys. The boys were all asleep upstairs and I was in the kitchen making myself some tea and reading. Suddenly, I heard the TV in the living room go on and start flipping from one channel to the next. At first I thought one of the boys had gotten up, but then I realized they would have had to walk right past me to get to the living room, and no one had walked past me. So it wasn't the kids. I then thought it was an intruder and panicked. But then I remembered that the way the living room was situated, again, somebody would have had to walk right past me to get to it. So it wasn't an intruder. In my mind, that left only one other possible culprit. A ghost. Crap, I thought. The house is haunted and I'm the only semi-adult here. So that means I have to deal with this on my own. I cautiously approached the entrance to the living room. As I drew closer, I heard another noise over the sound of the flipping channels. A sort of low growl. It scared me. I peeked my head around the corner, and then I walked into the living room, only to find that their German Shepherd had fallen asleep on the couch on top of the remote control. He was having a dream, thrashing around and growling in his sleep, causing the remote to turn on and flip channels. So no ghosts. I told the parents when they came home. Luckily, they still continued to hire me and didn't think I was off my nut, even though I clearly am. I have a friend who told anyone who would listen that her dead grandfather sent her cash when she needed it the most. The thing is, I knew at the time she was short on cash, as she was a poor student, and she wouldn't take a loan. I had just gotten a pay raise, so I dropped a 20-pound note in her handbag, thinking that she'd just find it later and assumed it had fallen out of her purse at some point. But no, she thought it was her grandfather. I never had the heart 
to tell her it was me. One time, a friend and I were walking home in the dark after smoking weed. He was looking down, texting on his phone, not paying attention as we were walking. There was a man approaching us and he bumped into my friend and just kept walking without apologizing. My friend jumped and said, What the F? Did you see that? I denied having seen anything. He then turned around and pointed to the man and said, Can't you see him? And I denied that I even saw him, even though obviously I could see him. This absolutely messed with his head, and he became really paranoid about walking in the dark after that. I didn't tell him that I was having him on for about two months. We don't speak anymore. We used to prank our co-worker at a youth detention facility. One night, when I was working in the control room, I called the pod where he was working, and I told him that the lights were flickering and he needed to shut them off since no one was in that room. When he told me the lights were already shut off, I told him the surveillance cameras showed me that they weren't. The lights were turned off, of course, but he got spooked thinking otherwise. Then, about a half hour later, when he went for his lunch break, one of the other guys tied a length of fishing line to his papers on his desk. When he came back from his lunch break, the guy yanked the fishing line, throwing the papers everywhere and scaring the crap out of the guy. No one ever told him that he was being pranked, and he still swears to this day that the facility is haunted. Not that it isn't haunted, but those occurrences were definitely us. I was staying at a haunted bed and breakfast that also offered ghost tours. We arrived and checked in during the day and decided to take the tour. They were telling our group all about the encounters and ghost stuff that investigators had found through the years. The one paranormal event that they were most proud of was the painting that supposedly had a spirit attached to it. They had multiple pictures of this spirit from different people and teams. Basically, it was a white, misty swirl on the painting. When the tour was over, I went back into that room to check the painting for myself. Figuring that those pictures were taken at night, I took a photo of the painting without the flash and checked it. There was nothing there. I then took the exact same photo, but this time I used a flash. There was the swirl. I then went closer to the painting and noticed that where the swirl appeared in the photos, there was an indentation in the painting. The mist was just the flash reflecting off that indentation. They were so proud of that ghost in the painting that I wasn't about to tell them what was really going on, assuming, of course, that they hadn't actually figured it out on their own already and were just using it to attract tourists. I just moved to a new place. Since I'm in the middle of a move, I put a stack of boxes about six feet high by the closet. I had only been here for two nights and I usually shower every other day. Since I was too lazy to hang up my towel in the bathroom, I just threw the wet towel over the closet door and waited for my next shower to take it back to the bathroom. I woke up in the middle of the night to see a man standing in my room scared the crap out of me until I realized it was just the towel hung over the closet door and the stack of boxes 
that made it look like a man in the dark room. Like a fool, I made the same mistake two nights in a row until I finally moved the towel after my next shower. And here is a story of a man who faked himself out. When I was 25 years old, I decided to put the Franklin Roosevelt quotation, the only thing to fear is fear itself, to the test. After all, I'm a rationalist who doesn't believe in good or evil, superstition or the paranormal. I was safe inside my own house, which I was sharing with three roommates at the time. I was completely at ease and felt comfortable and knew with absolute certainty that nothing would harm me. So I wanted to see if my rational mind, under the correct circumstances, could conjure up a supposedly paranormal entity. So come midnight, I decided to test my own mind. I drew open my bedroom curtains, which looked out onto a dark, moonlit alleyway, and I turned my back to the window and sat down at my computer. I decided to watch as many haunted house and ghost videos as possible and stay in a prolonged state of fear. After about three hours of non-stop horror, my hands were trembling, stomach churning, and I felt pale and cold. So it was time. I turned around and faced the window. To my disappointment, nothing was there. I turned on my bedroom light, took a few deep breaths, did a few jumping jacks, and shook my hands out. I felt my system returning, and I thought, what a waste of time. I still needed to wind down before going to bed, so I decided to step into the hallway and walk through the dark dining room to the kitchen. I had a pile of dirty dishes that still needed doing, so I filled up the sink with warm water and started scrubbing. At this stage, I felt like my system was returning to about 80% normal, but I still felt a little uneasy. While doing the dishes, I kept looking at the kitchen window, half expecting to see a scary face and hear a loud soundtrack from a horror movie or something, but still nothing. My body had returned to normal, but my brain was still primed for fear. But time for bed soon. I had almost finished the dishes when out of the corner of my eye, I saw something move. A housemate? No, it was much shorter. A humanoid under five feet tall, slowly walking through the dining room towards me. It made no noise at all, and it was indistinguishable from reality. It walked slowly past the dining room table into the full light of the kitchen and got about four feet away from me. It had long arms, and when it walked, its wrists dragged on the ground. It had light orange or tan skin that looked smooth except for a few speckles, and the legs were shorter and it had a pot belly. Its belly was slightly wider than the chest, and the head was half the size of the entire torso and smooth and elongated. It had no eyes, nose, or mouth. I don't remember what the feet looked like, but the legs made up about 30% of the total body height, and its round belly hung down to its thighs. Its knees were always in a bent position, and it had no hair and was entirely naked. As it approached me, I said out loud, I am not ready to see this. I am not ready to see this. And I stumbled back a few feet. When doing so, I backed right into a walk that was hanging on the wall. As the walk made a clanging noise, the entity disappeared instantaneously. I don't even recall blinking. It just disappeared. About two seconds later, I felt a sense of relief wash over my body and a sense of calm took over. I was in absolute awe 
and was so impressed that I could hallucinate something so incredibly vivid that it was virtually indistinguishable from reality. From the time I first saw it until the time it disappeared, I estimate it took just over five seconds. I sometimes think back on this test of the mind, and I think, if that walk wasn't hanging on the wall, how close would it have gotten to me? Also, what if I had walked towards it instead of stumbling backwards? I don't know if I'll ever have the spiritual framework to be ready to encounter something like that again. It could have touched me, but it didn't react to me at all. Thinking back, it didn't seem threatening at all. It seemed young and fairly harmless. If I had the willpower to kneel down and give it a hug, I would have. Even if it was a lower form of being, it was still a form of sentience. I would accept it. Unfortunately, I'm programmed with fight or flight, and I chose flight, so that wasn't an option. The entity that appeared before me wasn't threatening or imposing. It didn't raise its hand to me, and it moved very slowly. My reaction to it is a lesson for me. A part of me wants to be compassionate and help it, but the only way for me to see it again is to go through that whole process again. And I don't have it in me as yet to exist in a state of fear and to offer love at the same time. However, it's hard for me to entertain the notion that what I saw could have been real. I suspect it was just an hallucination, simple cause and effect. Since that incident, I've never had any others. If these stories are any indication, then quite a few encounters with the spirit world can be attributed to firing one up and partaking in the good old Mary Jane. Like poster Eric de Viking said, Stoners, you gotta love them. If you enjoyed tonight's stories, give them a thumbs up and comment below. Tell me about your pranks or misunderstandings, and which of these anecdotes was your favorite. As always, thank you so much for listening tonight and allowing me to entertain you. It really is always a party when you're here. So for now, until next time, stay scared and laughing, my friends. <laughs>